Spyro Reignited on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Which one is better? Well, I'll tell you right now, you're gonna be uh, confused. Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and back with a brand new Spyro the Dragon video. So we finally have landed on the next generation of gaming. The Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are finally out, and I was lucky enough to be able to get my hands on both consoles, which was not an easy task. One of the features that both consoles have is being backwards compatible with at least the previous generation. Now, this channel has been known for its Crash and Spyro content, which means that we have four games that can be played on these consoles. But which one of these powerhouses is better for our orange nutbag and purple boy? That's why we are here today. Now, we already covered Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. You can check out the video in the description, comment section below, or the info card in the top right corner. But today, we are going back to the Dragon Realms and seeing our favorite purple dragon, Spyro. Spyro making a comeback was something I had wanted for years. And at one point, I didn't think it was going to happen. But after playing the Insane Trilogy, I thought it would be awesome if Spyro could get a comeback the exact same way. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who thought that. And because of that, Spyro's comeback was extra special to me because it's what got me into the world of YouTube. I always have Spyro Reignited to thank for that. Now, I wanted the best and objective footage as possible. So I reached out to our friends and sponsors of the channel, Elgato, and they sent over a 4K 60 capture card pro. Thank you so much Elgato for sponsoring the video. You can check out an affiliate link in the description below. I also made sure to experience this on a 4K monitor running at 60 Hertz. So this comparison is as objective as possible. But like I mentioned, we're going to be splitting hairs here. If you have a preferred platform or even controller feel, then by all means go with that. But if you want to find the best of the best all the way down to the nitty gritty pixel, then you've come to the right video. So before we begin, we're gonna watch one minute of gameplay that's been pulled from both consoles. You'll be able to know what console it's from from the logo in the top left corner. Let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, there is not much of an overall difference between the two games. They both seem to run similarly, but there are differences between the two though. First off, that issue that we encountered with the Series X on the Insane Trilogy, yeah, it, it's still here. The contrast has been reduced by about 15 points on the Series X. If you compare it to the blacks and shadows that the PlayStation 5 has, you can see that the Xbox version still looks a bit washed out. This has been an infuriating issue that myself and many others have encountered with the Series X. Obviously, if you only use your Xbox, you could calibrate your TV to match it. However, everything else that you watch on the same TV or monitor is going to have crushed blacks, which is going to look a bit goofy. Like this example here, if you adjusted your TV for your Xbox and then switched back to the PlayStation 5. While the Xbox will look good, everything else will look like this. Every show, movie, game you play that's not on the Xbox is going to look like this. But let's get to the loading screens. This was a bit of a wild ride, so uh, <clears throat> hang on. When you enter a world by a portal, the PlayStation 5 consistently beats the Xbox Series X, but only by about half a second. Again, 
For PlayStation pounding their chest on how their NVMe drive is the best in the biz, in terms of backwards compatibility, it's so far only having a marginal improvement in certain environments. Again though, these games have not been optimized for next gen and is unpatched for this generation, so make sure to remember that. But this is where things begin to get wonky. When you travel back to the home world, everything flips over. Xbox loads actually quite a bit faster. In fact, it consistently loaded about two and a half seconds faster than PlayStation 5 when heading back to the home world. This didn't make sense to me as PlayStation had won originally, even if it was only by half a second. What confused me even more though is a feature that was not included in the Insane Trilogy that I couldn't really test, and that was the fast travel feature in Reignited. Now so far, in all of my testing and comparing of the next gen consoles, this yielded the biggest difference that I have seen thus far in all of my testing in terms of loading. Xbox was over 5 seconds faster, and I have no idea why. What is happening to the Xbox that running through the portal causes it to bog down so much? And then yet when you go to fast travel, it's faster by over 5 seconds. I honestly have no idea. However, outside of the half a second advantage that the PlayStation 5 holds onto for entering a level through a portal, Xbox overall crushes PlayStation in the loading sections of the game, both leaving the level and fast traveling to another level. The next thing I wanted to look at was the graphics and textures of the game. Obviously, on the surface, they look almost identical, but if we hyper zoom in here to the back corner here where we get a nice look at some textures, lines, and shadows, we can actually see that Xbox has slightly better textures. Of course, it's also hard to tell through the slightly washed out footage, but when corrected, you can see that Xbox's lines and textures are just marginally more clear. As PlayStation starts to get a little muddy and murky, but of course, we are dealing with that slightly washed out look. So because of that, it's a tie in the graphics department. While the textures are better on the Xbox side of things, PlayStation shadows are better balanced. But if you calibrated your monitor or TV to your Xbox, then Xbox would have the slight lead. However, an issue that this game has on both consoles is severe pop-in. Pop-in is when the perspective of the player comes within range of something and the game increases its quality as the player gets closer to it. If they did not do this and have everything run at the highest graphical setting at all distances, your consoles would overheat and, well, basically explode. So objects at a distance stay at a much lower texture and poly count, but increases as you get closer and closer. However, this can create pop-in, which is where you can literally see the threshold of when the objects render in the new textures, and it definitely can be jarring on certain levels. The next issue is frame rate. Now this is a bit of a funny one to compare because of what happened on last gen with this game. A lot of people reported awful frame rate chugging on certain levels that varied from console to console for Spyro Reignited. Some original Xbox Ones were able to play the game at peak frame rates while the One X's and Pro's chugged and had frame rate problems. Some people's base consoles would run the game fine, but someone else's wouldn't. It was literally all random and I couldn't find a pattern to it. It was all a case by case incidence. And we get a better, but similar situation here. You still see frame drops once in a while on both consoles, but it's hard to replicate it and pinpoint where it happens. Where it will drop on one console, it won't drop on another. But if you try to go through an area again where the console originally did drop frames, it'll just run smooth. So honestly, this one is a tie again, because there really isn't one that is dropping frames more than the other in a controlled and consistent manner. The only freeze ups I can clearly see is the Xbox loading screen into a level. But again, that's a loading screen. It really doesn't matter and doesn't impact the performance of the game. So again, like the last video, there is not one console that stands knees and toes above the other. Both consoles work almost on par with each other. but. I am disappointed. Like the Insane Trilogy, the only benefits that the game brings is loading. 
as frame rates are still locked at 30, resolution is still 1080p, and we are still getting random frame drops. I believe and hope that some kind of patch for both consoles could come out and optimize the game to work like the PC version, which is the best way to play Spiral Reignited hands down, and I can't recommend it enough. However, with that said, the overall winner is the Xbox Series X. Though the Series X has that slightly washed out image, they either tied or overall won every other category. But the category that stands out the most is the loading screens. The Xbox Series X loaded over 5 seconds faster on the fast travel alone. So if you only own an Xbox and want to calibrate your TV to a better image for your Xbox, you can enjoy all the benefits of the Series X without the washed out issues that others might be having. The overall winner today is the Xbox Series X. Make sure to subscribe as I'll be tackling CTR in the next video, followed by Crash Bandicoot 4. Thank you so much to all those who not only support the channel, but myself and my family. Because of your contributions, I'm able to do this full time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button or becoming a Patreon with the link in the description. I also live stream every Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and say hi. Again, thank you to everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream.